Hare Krishna. Question. Are ISKCON devotees CIA agents? If not, why do some people consider them to be so? Answer. No, it's not at all. ISKCON devotees are not at all CIA agents. In fact, uh, if we see, most, uh, a large, a large part of ISKCON membership is not even Americans. And uh, in the early days of the um, Krishna consciousness movement, uh, it started, it had started in America and most of its pioneering members and leaders were from its um, initial ranks, were from its initial American members. And when these devotees came to India, Krishna consciousness movement started in 1960s. Six, Srila Prabhupada, the founder was from India, he lived in India throughout his life and then he went to America because he felt that Indians were not so interested, although he tried to uh, spread Krishna Bhakti Yoga in India also. And then when he went to America and he brought the Americans back to India. In 1968 he brought them and then he kept bringing them again and again and then uh, people started building temples. Uh, people started appreciating and temples started getting built over here and the devotees stayed over here. Now because some of the, because most of the initial members were Americans and because at that time there were hostility, there was the, the relationship between India and America was not so amiable. At that time the Cold War was at its uh, frigid coldest and <coughs> Although India had officially been a part of the non-alignment movement and it had not allied with either side of the cold block, uh, but for practical purposes India was considered to be allied with Russia, with USSR, uh, what was at that time, uh, Soviet Russia and Pakistan had allied with America and it was thought that at that time Pakistan, that America was actively helping Pakistan and one of the ways it will help Pakistan is then uh, is by penetrating in India by planting CIA agents in India. So at that, uh, as soon after, in that time itself the uh, the war which eventually led to the formation of Bangladesh happened and so there was a lot of political tension between India and Pakistan and because uh, America was at that time helping Pakistan at a political level at a military level, so Indians were quite suspicious of Americans. So devotees who came to India, it was thought that, some people thought that these might be CIA agents because they thought oh, these are Americans and they have come to India and if they take the garb of sadhus then Indians will not be suspicious at all. Indians have a very lot of, lot of trust in sadhus. So by dressing as sadhu, CIA agents will be able to infiltrate anywhere and everywhere. And maybe this, that's how they have taken this guard. Now actually this had absolutely no basis in fact. Because the initial devotees, initial people who became devotees in India, uh, in America, and who came to India as the leaders of the Bhakti movement, uh, they, they were largely disillusioned with the American government. Uh, they had, uh, they were disillusioned with the, what America considered to be the good life, uh, living in material prosperity, and they were looking for spiritual growth. And Bhakti Yoga, the chanting of the holy names, offered them an exciting and fulfilling alternative spiritual lifestyle. So, for someone to become a government agent, that person has to be devoted to the government, dedicated to the government. Uh, but the, the initial members of his con were not at all. Uh, and they were quite disillusioned with the American government, so there was no question of them acting as CIA agents. But the, at that time, because of the tension that was there between, political tension that was there between India and Pakistan, and consequently India and America, and further because the whole prospect of devotees, of people from America adopting uh, the Bhakti culture and becoming uh, devotees, was so unprecedented, so unheard of, that many many Indians just couldn't make sense of it. And that's why when some suspicious people, some self-interested people uh, started spreading the suspicion that uh, 
the oh these may be cia agents and that notion got spread but uh, and that's how that notion came about but over time as the devotees uh, lived and practiced the life of serious bhaktas and how they had uh, even these american devotees they had no interest in practice in anything material they were interested simply in sharing krishna bhakti as much as possible she had to read krishna's book chanting krishna's name helping build krishna's temples so then even indians started realizing that apart from these being uh, political spies or political agents these are very devoted very devoted uh, spiritualists and then they are uh, they are very serious devotees and then they started respecting them and all the suspicions went away and many of these devotees have now become uh, the prominent spiritual leaders and even indians have actually taken initiation from many american vaishnavas who have become exalted gurus now so now practically no one makes that suspicion make a make that suspicion has a suspicion or makes that accusation that is conducted as a cia agents that is just a remnant that was there from a past when it was a suspicion at that time which came because of the tens political tension and the sheer astonishment and incomprehensibility of americans becoming devotees so it is a baseless uh, suspicion which is now and it entirely irrelevant thank you very much